I'd recently pimped out the Tika with a carbon fibre stock and a good friend of mine at the um, local Deerstalkers Club professionally bedded it for me which I highly recommend for any new stock fitting and so it was out to the range for a bit of a sighting session and then uh, up to the main range for a bit of a uh, blood in session. Uh, John Clark, he's one of my subbies. You might see him on a few hunts yet. We're just out here shooting the shit and um, just watching a few paces. And he's got work tomorrow. I haven't, so I'm going into a hut and staying the night and going to try my luck elsewhere. So uh, here we're just chilling there, hoping something might walk out across here that John might be able to um, sink a bullet into. I uh, just got into the hut, so I squared all my gear away, sleeping bag, everything, sorted my sleeping quarters out. Um, got my packed little day bag ready for the morning, morning. and uh, just got a bit of backcountry cuisine on the go. The um, Thai, chicken Thai curry, haven't tried that before. Um, nice and good for this time of year when you get in, like it's about bloody half past nine, quarter to ten now. And I need to be up at early in the morning, so it's good to just have something ready to go. And then uh, just while I wait for that to uh, come to fruition, just having a quiet little uh, craft brew, just to take the edge off. Yeah, morning all. Just grab me a coffee and a bit of bricky, and then uh, gonna hit the road. Um, it's been raining a bit during the night, but it seems to have stopped now. Still very overcast skies out here but um we'll get out there and get amongst them and um yeah see what might be wandering around on the fresh grass Three of them there, a couple of hinds, and I think he hit a velvet stag and it's just moved out of sight. So, gonna try and get around the hill. I think they'll make the cover before I get there, though. Well, I almost thought I was in with a second chance there, but um, no go. Keep on persisting. Well, there was um, two velvet stags in the hind, and uh, that hind, she started moving first. They're usually the first to move, and here she. She started, she knew something was wrong. She's leading those other two out of it. Bit of excitement there, got the jump on me. Um, so, only thing to do is keep heading around further and uh, hopefully we'll chance something else that hasn't made the bush. Nice start to the morning. Rolled a yearling, about 100, oh, no, 150 yards flat. We're in about the same place I got one about a month ago. So, a little wee honey hole here. Another yearling ran out past me here. I was running up to have a look. 
is it barking at me on the ridge there somewhere? There you go, you can hear that barking. I don't know whether you can hear that barking, but you hold. Okay, I'm going to go around for a bit of a look. Well, I'm going to get down there and uh, get the new honey badger knife to work. Lolita from the uh, Rohini herd. So um, there was a good little, um, good little uh, catch for the morning, really. Especially as the same thing as when I came around here last time. It's had a little sort of breeze. It was following me around the ridge, and that's kind of what it was doing. These there were two deer here, I think. The other one ran around the corner, started barking at me. But basically, they were onto me. I'm pretty much sure. So yeah, it had to be a quick shot, nice shot, 185 yards, can't ask for better than that. So uh, yeah, I'll put the honey badger knife to work and we'll go around another face and have a look for a morning and then uh, yeah, back to the hut for lunch. Come to see what the noise is about obviously. Safe for me, even if I hadn't shot something. Once again, skyline. Never ever shoot on the skyline team. Well, getting on board with that yearling nice and early in the morning, we gave me a bit of time to go and have a look into another gully and uh, spotted a few more deer out and about. So it was awesome to see. It's good to just go and chew the eyes in with the albinos. Time to break them out. Yeah, well, um, yeah, apart from those um, little handful of hinds, and not a hell of a lot moving at the moment, so, so I might go around and uh, put the honey badger to work once more and then uh, back to the hut. This uh, honey badger knife, highly recommended it, just straight out of the box, it just purred through that um, processing job of that um, yelling this morning, and just fits real nice in the hand, and if you do get one, I recommend getting the orange handle, because any other colour, you just won't see it, um, especially a black handle, you just won't see it when you put it down. Yeah, so I'm really wrapped with that, highly recommend them. Just as a disclaimer, um, I am no, in, in no way uh, being sponsored by uh, this product. <laughs> I just think it's a good product. Well, I was just going to step out the door and uh, head up the hill. And when you know it, it starts raining. I'll wait for a bit longer. Got a break in the rain, so I'm uh, going to get out there and uh, get amongst it. Didn't, uh, just a bit of a thunder shower didn't come to too much luckily yeah so that's all right oh well get on up the hill
I would spoken too soon, and no sooner got up the top of the hill when it started to uh, come down in buckets again, so I made a safe retreat to some heavy uh, native bush, and then just sat out on the edge of it in case another shower came along and got the binos to work. Something up in there. Rolled a whole heap of rocks. Get the feeling we might have a spooked animal. Well, as the saying goes, when you see a hare, you'll see a deer. And that proved to be only too true in this case. I suspect that these might be the same group of animals I'd seen that morning, being uh, two velvet stags and uh, one hind. I think that was those um, deer I seen the first thing this morning. Their hind and the two stags, velvet stags. But I'm going to leave them. Not worried about them. I've got one on deck, so. It's more than I can handle for now, so yeah, it's pretty cool. Well, um, just trying to get a little fire going back in the hut. Um, going to cook a meal in a minute. Just having a quiet beer. And, uh, yeah, just probably just get up and sort of blast our way out in the morning. Probably what we'll do be the order of the day. Not leave too early, just breaking daylight type of thing. So, yeah, been a pretty good little hunt, really. So, yeah, it's good. Um, slow start to the morning. Um, just having a bit of brekkie, coffee and porridge, and uh, it's been raining all night. I just kind of sort of stopped now. So I'm just going to pack the gear and uh, head out, head home. Yeah, another little hunting mission, another little Stag Slayer 300 hunting mission. Um, thanks for tagging along. Um, make sure you tell your friends and like and subscribe. And uh, by the way, uh, Mr. John, nice to meet you, buddy. And uh, we'll be in touch real soon. Okay, over and out. Catch you all on the next one. Yeah, g'day. Uh, Want to get on to more deer? Want to find out where more deer are sort of hanging about? Well, stick by with um, your mate here for this red hot tip. And I'm only going to tell this tip to you because, yeah, you know, I like you. You probably subscribed to my channel, so that's probably more of a reason to like you. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, here goes. Um, it's a food source of deer, apart from grass, of course. What else do they like to eat? Well, in the native tree variety in New Zealand, they like to eat um, the number one food source is the broadleaf, the Grisolinia broadleaf is its scientific name, or scientific name I think is Grisolinia. Um, and here is a, a specimen right behind me here, this nice round shrubby bright green tree. Um, distinguishing features of it are these um, 
shiny oval leaves which are about generally about two inches to four inches in size and green stems on the um, new shoots and just running down to a woody stem and they also uh, they also be known to grow out of other trees like um, dead trees, dying trees, tree stumps even they're pretty voracious and fast growers and um, yeah the deer love them they love them to the bits they love the new shoots that come up on the base and they also like to forage on the more often than not forage on the dead leaf litter which turned these turn yellow when they die like this little wee yellow number here and it sort of releases a few sugars and um, yeah the deer love it it's like the little sweetener for them so uh, yeah if you're looking for um, more deer or trying to get on to more deer um, Look for a face that's got a lot of these put in them. You'll find, um, you'll probably more than likely come across better numbers of deer. And as well as that, it's a good indicator if a deer population is getting out of control because uh, these little fellas here will be the first to start getting grazed back to the ground. And then you know, well, by, by that stage, you should be seeing mobs of 20 wandering around the middle of the day. But um, yeah, when you see it getting down to that stage on a major scale, then you know you've got a problem. So uh, yeah, there's your hot tip. Um, I'll give you another hot tip of an, on another tree, on another hunt. So stand by and stick with me. Cheers.